everybody here today. And, uh, and those that are joining us on live stream, we appreciate you tuning in with us also. I think they used to say that on the radio, thank you for tuning in to us. That might be talking like I'm a little older than that or something, you know, but nobody talks about like that now, do they? You think I'm old? Okay, all right, well, I'm old. Not quite 60 yet, but I won't be long, okay? All right, there is a few uh, announcements I'd like to share with you. Hey, everything else uh, as far as regular monthly or weekly activities are on schedule, so that's uh, nothing changed there. But there is something coming up next Saturday uh, between 10 and noon, and that's going to be the Bloom Craft Ministry. And uh, Julie Kaywood and Sarah Dean are going to be working with that project. And that's well, you're welcome. Anyone is welcome to come and do that. And there will be a, a devotion also during that time. And I see out uh, that there's less things to do at the picnic area. So somebody's been doing some work out there. So we appreciate whoever's done that to, uh, to make the picnic area in, with the improvements. And I think there's only two things listed that still needs to be done. So if anyone wants to step up and brush roll and varnish the stage and the um, uh, picnic tables, hey, you go for it, okay? Let uh, Buddy or Wes or Brother Steve know. And, uh, and so let's begin now our call to worship. Isn't that sweet? Our day, today's call to worship comes from Psalms 147, verse 1. And will you stand as we read together? Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant, and praise is beautiful. Now let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, it is beautiful to praise you. And to have you in our life, your presence means so much to us. And we're thankful that we can gather in your name today to worship and honor and praise you. We pray that you would lead us today with your Holy Spirit. And may everything said and done be pleasing to you. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Are we ready to sing? Y'all ready? We're waiting for our guitar player to come on up here. All right. You feel free to clap and get excited today. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. I wonder so aimless I'd be with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. In Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light.
our Father in heaven, where could we go? To you. To you, Father. We look to you. We lift up our eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh our help? Our help comes from you, Father. You have made heaven and earth, sky and sea, man and woman. You have made us. And through your Son, Jesus, you have saved us. God, thank you. We don't even deserve to be in this service except for your son and your kindness, your mercy, and your forgiveness. So thank you. We gather in your son's name, in his body, his church. He's the head of the body. Lord Jesus, loose your spirit among us, already flowing, no doubt, through the music, to seeing the light of your glory, the light of your truth, but also the, 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 the tender relationship that, Holy Spirit, you would open the windows of heaven and help us come before the Father, to go to before his throne, to worship, to bring a pleasing offering, a humble heart, an obedient life, to bring and to return to you the good you've given to us. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God, we lift up our brother Todd Davenport. Uh, need for hernia surgery this morning, immediate need. He may be in that surgery right now. We ask for healing. We ask for safety. We ask for stability. They've been through a lot, but may this be another step of healing in Todd's restoration. Bless them. Father, thank you for those among us you are healing, those who've had good surgeries, good reports, good things. Yet, Father, we also lift up a family in our community who has lost a loved one, a daughter, a, a granddaughter, a mom, a sister. We lift up Whitney's family to you, particularly Zoe. God, Zoe comes here, comes with Jill Smith. We ask you to bring comfort help and love your protection we pray for for your body here and all of your believers but also help us extend your protection to those who are vulnerable God you are good and we trust you to help so you are and any among us who is hurting we ask you to bring us close. We ask you to bring healing, to bring a hope that you have the answers and you're very, very happy to help. God, it is good to be in your presence. Thank you. Through your son, Jesus, we pray. And now we join hands. If you had a vaccine, and let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me ask the ushers to come and we'll receive our offering this morning. It's a plate offering as we normally do. The offering box is still here if you would rather not do a plate offering. And you can always send your check or go online and give your offering to God. But very appropriate in the worship service to give to our Lord.
Let's stand and sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Heavenly Father, we present these tithes and these offerings to you. We pray that you will bless it, and we pray that you will use it to support the ministries of this church. All glory goes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now take this time to greet your neighbor, please. Eli and Abby, when I saw you all come down with your folks to light the candles, church, I could see them in acolyte robes. You may not like robes. We don't have to do it, but it's just an idea. They are four, almost five years old, and they, they could be your acolytes. Um, David and many you may have to guide them. It's, it's a live flame, um, but I, could, I just saw it. It's something we'll talk about. I think they do a good job. All right, today's message, whatever he says to you, whatever he says to you, and the reply is do it. Mary says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. So during this sermon, whenever I say whatever he says to you, I would like you all to say, do it. Let's practice. Whatever he says to you, excellent, got it. I have another request. I don't have any projection for the scripture. We're on vacation, I just didn't do it. An idea came, let's do it an old way, and let's do it an involving camp way, a Lucon way. I'd like the women to be merry in this John 2 water to wine passage. I will give you a few words, and I'd like you to speak them back as Mary. Men, I want us to be Jesus. I'll give a few words and then you all repeat them. And that way we will share this gospel reading together interactively. Please stand as, as we read the gospel together. Let me do the narration and then I'll give you your part. Um, we'll, we'll get it. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, Women, they have no wine. Beautiful. Jesus said to her, Men, we're going to take it slow. Woman, what does your concern have to do with me. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Ray, women, <laughs> you're doing good, but the do it's right, you're on it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. 
Jesus said to them, Men, fill the water pots with water. They filled them to the brim, and he said to them, Draw some out now, men, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who drew the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, now I want everybody to repeat the sections with me, where all the servants, um, or we'll, we'll do this, this fellow's words, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This is the word of God for the people of God. Beautiful. You may be seated. Very good. And now, whenever I say whatever he says to you, reply, do it. Ray, you were right on it, and I forgot to exempt the scripture reading. Whatever he says to you, do it. Friday afternoon, I was taking a little break from shed building, trail clearing. We were on vacation last week. You know how that goes? We got to go away for one day and work for four days. <laughs> That's okay. Our staycation was fun. Kate and Tony, you know how... It, nothing really ever grows out in flat woods. The bushes don't grow. The weeds don't grow. Everything just kind of stays calm, which is a complete lie. Everything is growing abundantly right now. And Karen like, has trails through the property, and she loves to walk on them, but they got overgrown. So one of our jobs this week was take a weed eater down that trail and just cut everything we could cut, even bring some pruning shears, cut, rip, and now there's some pretty nice trails um, they're nice and wide, so you can see any reptiles that might be out there. And we've been on them. It, it paid off. We've also been working on a, a pole shed, 16 by 12 pole shed. And it's, it's in progress. But Friday afternoon, Kato was going to run out of lumber for the rafters. Wasn't really wanting to go anywhere to get lumber. Surely he wasn't wanting to pay for any lumber. And like, ah, but... Uh, and then the Lord just laid it on my heart, go to town and get lumber now. It's like 1.30 Friday afternoon, um, if you remember. So, okay, Lord, you're the Lord. I'll, I'll skip the rest here. We'll go to town, come up to City Supply. He had the idea in my head, get, get two by eights and cut them in half. Yeah, okay, that would work. Then you get two two by fours. And I'm not putting hefty rafters on this shed, not investing all my money in rafters. There are only going to be squirrels on there, so I'm not putting big rafters. Two by four rafters. Okay. So I go in and get some prices. A stud length two by four, which is about 92, 93 inches, was seven and a quarter. Eh, not bad. How much for a full eight footer? I wanted to have a little rafter tail on there. Twelve dollars. Twelve dollars for three inches of wood was five more dollars. Yeah, and we make those ourselves. We cut the 16s in half. The 16s are $22 each. I'm like, well, I've got five pieces of gold laying on my, in that shed, 16-foot two-by-fours. How much for a two-by-eight, eight-foot? $13. Oh. If you divide 13 in half, what do you get? Six fifty. dollars ah, That's the best price for a two-by-four. Then the fellow, he works there, he's a youth minister too, he said to me, you know, that bigger two by eights, that's yellow pine, and the smaller is white pine. That yellow pine is stronger. Ah, that settled it. If I can buy something stronger and cheaper, wouldn't you do it? I'll take 10. I don't know if we have that many, let's go look. So he goes there in the bay where they keep the bigger lumber. Guess how many they had? 10, <laughs> that's exactly, it. I'll take all of them. So he said, yeah, though we've had those a while. That's the old price. Good, I'll take the old price. So I brought them home, and Karen and I ripped them in half. And it, now, ripping yellow pine is not the most exciting thing in the 
it binds and it shifts and Karen got, <gasps> rightly so, that's a table saw blade that is dangerous, but we had ended up with 10, 20 beautiful two by fours and they are mounted Friday, last night we put them up. Why did I tell you this? Friday afternoon, the Lord laid on my heart, go to town. You don't want to, you don't feel like it, but go to town and get more lumber. Yes, sir. Uh, whatever he says to you, do it. It paid off. It really was the right thing to do. So uh, I share that to let you know that, you know, isn't it great that your Savior is a carpenter too? Don't do it that way. You better notch that one. I, I lost two hours of time notching some posts that needed to be notched. He's also a good designer. kind of tells me as we go, okay, you, you and Mark may have built your cabin that way. Of course, Mark knows to build anything. But he helps us. So let's take this teaching that whatever he says to you, do it. Oh, you're sleeping. See, I'm, that, this is how I'm going to test you to see if you're awake. And if it's just like, do it, and I'll, know, I'll know I've lost you and I'll just wrap up. I guess it's your way to get me to quit. First, Jesus is at this wedding, and just, I don't even have sermon points. You all are going to be the sermon points. Repeat after me, wedding guest. Right, Jesus is a guest. He has come to the wedding of this couple. It's a high day in Jewish life, in Galilean life. The weddings, just like they are today, are beautiful, meaningful, once in a lifetime, special, and unlike today, which the service is 15 minutes to 30 minutes, the reception is an hour to three hours, a Jewish wedding is seven days. So if we were going to have a, a wedding here this morning, we would all be here till next Saturday night. Might as well just bring your bedroll. You know, the, the host family will provide the food and the wine. We'll, we will really get to know each other. Could you imagine after seven days in the church house here how well we'd know each other? We would know who gets up early. We'd know who stay up, stays up late. We would know who snores. We would know who talks in their sleep. We would know all kinds of things. That's okay. In that day, they were extended families, just like Adair County. The Jewish families, the aunts and the uncles and the cousins. And for me, just like the Italian family in Massachusetts, I've got cousins, I've got a thousand cousins, all Italian family. They gathered for the wedding. Jesus was invited. It says he was there with his disciples. If we look back in the passages, we notice that uh, Peter and Andrew, James and John, and Nathaniel and Philip have been the ones called so far. So Jesus is at the table, probably L-shaped or U-shaped table, with at least six disciples, but he has not started his ministry yet. He didn't come to the wedding to minister. He didn't come to speak. He didn't come to heal. He's not doing the ceremony. He's a guest. You have been a guest at weddings many times in many different venues, some here, some outside, some far off. But it's always fun to, to dress up and go to the wedding. And, and I testify to you, the weddings I've done, the Lord Jesus still comes to weddings. Once that bridal march or whatever the entrance song is played, and when we get toward the vows, I can sense him right here on this platform. He making the two one. It, it really is wonderful, joyful. The United States, since, since COVID put off many weddings, we're looking at having 650,000 weddings this year across the country. Every wedding venue is probably booked, Rick, you're probably busy every Saturday night from now until 2026. <laughs> Just, okay, we can come back together. We can sit at a table with each other. Yay. Jesus was a wedding guest. He didn't come to serve. There were servants to serve the wine and serve the food and do whatever needed to be done. However, this wedding was facing, repeat after me, a wedding test. A wedding test. There are no perfect weddings. Every wedding has a challenge somehow, somewhere. Something in the outfit, something in the PA system, something in one of the bridal party. 
something in the caterer, something in the photographer, something goes wrong. At Christina's wedding in Berea, the organist is supposed to be there at 4.15, it's 4.30, no organist. Where is he? This is a five o'clock wedding. Thankfully, the sound man had his phone number and called him, you know, are you supposed to be here? <gasps> I thought it was quarter of five. He came directly there, he got to play the organ for the prelude and before the wedding started, but I'm telling you, you never know what's gonna happen. A wedding test. At Rachel's wedding, which was here nine years ago, June of 2012, do you remember running your air conditioner more than normal during June of 2012, especially the end? Do you remember if you have a phone that gives you a temperature that it comes up 104 degrees? <laughs> yes, Rachel's wedding day is 104 degrees. The air conditioners were on the fritz in the Life Center. They were out when the wedding cake came. They texted me, the, the frosting is melting on the wedding cake. What? Talk about a test. Well, so I call our heating and air friends, and they come and do wonders for that system and get it going. We could have the reception in the Life Center. Uh, some of the things, Randall, you've had two girl weddings. I've had three girl weddings. And how did your wife do during the wedding? Did she hold up calm, cool, and collected? Way to go, Jamie. So did Karen. Calm, cool, and collected. It'll be okay. What? That's our job, man. Just, there's only one meltdown. Good job. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. We got it back together. Wedding test, all to say, this wedding is out of wine. Not they're about to run out, they're out. If the servant, the guest says, could I have another uh, goblet of wine? Um, hold on a minute, let me go see. There's no more wine. And they can't say there's no wine because not, it is extremely embarrassing to run out of wine at the marriage feast. Furthermore, Dr. Warren Wiersbe in his commentary on this passage says, it was against the law to run out of wine at the wedding feast. You could be fined. So this poor family in Cana, they're out of wine, and at a Jewish wedding, you're, you're locked in together, like I said. Where are, you gonna, where are you gonna get that much wine? They're in trouble. They're in trouble of ruining the whole wedding. The anger of the guests, the consequences from the magistrates. And here is a young couple, they're probably no more than 13, 14 years old, 15 years old, they're married young, after their bar mitzvah, they get married. It's not their fault. So Mary, Jesus' mother, she knows who can provide the wine. And you and I both know Jesus probably did this at home. When his family was short, oh, mother, I just went out to the shed and found another basin full of wine. Well, it wasn't wine when, three minutes ago. No doubt she knew he could turn water to wine. So she brings, and repeat after me, a wedding request. And that's where we got into the dialogue with Mary talking to Jesus she says to Jesus, Jesus, they have no more wine. That's what she said. She actually gave a report. They have no more wine, but it sure had a very motherly request under it. The implication of, would you please provide the wine? She looked at him, he looked at her and said, politely, woman, it's not my hour. I'm not supposed to minister yet. Did she accept that? No. You always think of Mary as gentle, which she was. But have you ever thought of Mary as the tiger? Son, I need you to make this to me wine. I don't care how you do it, but we need some wine. And then she doesn't say anything back to him. What does she say? Whatever he says to you, do it. She could tell he would do it. And she left to go tell the panicking mother of the bride or mother of the groom, it'll be okay. We found some wine. And Jesus has the servants fill the water pots, clay water pots, 
20 or 30 gallons each, which to us, you just get the hose, you run the hose in there and fill them up. In Cana, how did they fill them up? You go to the well and you draw bucket after bucket after bucket. They just didn't fill them up like, like one sentence. It could have took an hour or two hours to fill the water pots. We need more wine. It's coming, it's coming, more wine. And then Jesus says, now dip some out and take it to the master of the feast. The servant, who knew it was water, dips it out, takes it to the master. The master tastes it and says, mmm. Most families serve the good wine first and the inferior wine later after the guests have had some to drink. But your family has saved the best till now. Till now. Fourth point, repeat after me, wedding blessed, wedding blessed. Jesus somewhat secretly made sure it was a joyful day or a joyful week. That couple went through the whole wedding week, did all the things there were to do. The guests were happy and supportive. And after so much wine, they got happier. That's why you don't want the wine to run out because they get less happy. So... He took care of it. The servants knew that was not wine we put in those vessels. That was water. It is one of the blessings of being a servant of the Lord. You and I are servants. The Greek word doulos. Paul uses even the word slave. Not a bad slave, but, it, but indebted slave to Jesus. Servant. We get to see some of the things on the inside that the world doesn't see. That was water. I know that was water. Wasn't that water? It was water. And all of a sudden, it's wine. Who is that man at that table? They all knew each other. Canaan wasn't very far from Nazareth. That's Jesus from Nazareth. That's Joseph and Mary's boy. He didn't do anything. Or did he? He did. It was a miracle. The creator of the universe is sitting at that table. And isn't it interesting that, he, that there are clay pots, and you may have heard this before, six of them. How many days did it take God to create the world? Six days. What did he take to make Adam? Clay. One pot for each day. Here's the creator sitting at the table. You're wondering, how, how water just has hydrogen and oxygen. They didn't know that back then. How are you going to make wine? Wine requires carbon for the sugars. How are you going to do that? It's not an issue. It, does, it doesn't matter what you put in those vessels. The Creator is right here. And so the minute he said wine, it was wine. He just changed it. He, he added molecules to it. He made it wine. Which for us, we have no idea how he did that. For them, they had no idea how he did it. To him, okay, mom, I'll do it this time. It was not a problem. These things were easy for him. John is trying to get us to see that this man at this table is the Son of God. Infinite. Join the Father in the creation in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and nothing was made without God, without the Word. All things were made through Him. The, crea the Creator, the Converter. Jesus was considered at this event a wedding guest. Mary and the host, host family faced a wedding test. Mary brought to her son Jesus a wedding request. Jesus responded, and the event was a wedding blessed. Most people never knew the difference. Whatever he says to you, most of you all with me, stay with me, we're almost there. He can change you and me from water to wine. He can change you and me from petty to pure, from dirty to delightful, from hurt to healed, from procrastinators to producers, from selfish to servants. 
He can change this water into a good wine. Wine had spiritual connotations to it, supernatural connotations, changing the earthly to the supernatural. Doesn't he do that for us? Taking our earthly hearts and changing them into a whole new heart, new life, our old water making it into a new wine. And whether you drink wine or not, don't get hung up on the wine. Look at how he converted it to what grew, what was harvested, the sweetness of the juice or the wine, the taste and the celebration. I'm not even putting the focus in the right place. The focus was on those people in that wedding hall. John begins Jesus' ministry, miraculous ministry. Jesus didn't want to begin it, but John records it at a wedding. Who wrote Revelation and the marriage supper of the Lamb? Who wrote that? John. It ends with Jesus not as a guest, but as the host, welcoming his bride the church, at the marriage supper of the Lamb, at which there will be millions and millions and billions of people seated at this glorious banquet in heaven. Not for seven days, but forever. You see, there's a lot in there, and John's just giving us the beginning. That little miracle was just a taste of what's coming. This man at this table is the Son of God. Believe him. Follow him. Throughout John's whole gospel, that's what he says. Believe. He who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, that's John 3. Just walk through the whole gospel. We believe it, God. Thank you. Karen, would you bring the music team up, Ray, and let's sing, I Need Thee Every Hour. Don't you like Mary even more now? I really like Mary. I'd like to meet her. I'd probably be intimidated by her, but I'd like to meet her. What a confident and humble servant of God. Let it be unto me as you have said. Didn't she say that to Gabriel? Let it be to me, a handmaiden of the Lord. Hallelujah. May we continue to be servants letting Jesus change us from old water into new wine. The altar is open if anyone is in need of prayer. Let's stand. Let's stand. It's our invitation.
son getting married Saturday. Grace, I just had to share that. That was so fun. That wasn't a big secret. And so we blessed that marriage. Dan, are you all traveling to it? Beautiful. Beautiful. It's going to be wedding season again, as we know. And, we, and I'd like for all of us to be in the wedding hall at least, well, if we're here for an hour on Sunday, but I'm thinking of more ways. I'd like Richard Stevens to share his testimony on a Sunday night sometime this month. I'd like Todd Davenport to share his testimony on a Sunday night. And both of these men are going to take longer than five minutes. Richard already told me, it's going to take me a while. I said, that's okay, Richard. So uh, times for all of us to come together, late service, early service, everybody, to hear the good works of the Lord. So let's take with us whatever he says to you, do it. Amen. Are we ready to sing? God be with you till we meet again. Praise the Lord. Amen. I say, um, Brother Steve's, uh, just do it. I mean, when he tells us something, sometimes it's challenging, especially for a control freak like me. <laughs> so it, you can really, really no way, come on. But no, it, I'll tell you what, there's been a lot of decisions I've made where I've just trusted him and followed him and just awesome. So please pray with me. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this sermon. Pray that you be with us this week, coming and going. In Jesus Christ's holy, precious name, amen.